Hello, and welcome back to um, my World of Tanks replays. Um, this is episode something. I, I, I really don't know. And uh, we're here in the M46 Patton, um, Tier 9 American Medium, um, a vehicle I really, really enjoy, and definitely the vehicle I am, in the, be I am the best in. Um, if you can excuse my poor use of the English language. Uh, so... We are here on Lakeville, um, top tier, only three tier nines per team, otherwise it's pretty much all tier eights. Uh, so, um, as I said, I do really well in this vehicle, and I really like this vehicle, and um, this is by far the best game I have had in this vehicle. Um, and you will get to see it all come together. Um, so to start out this game, I decided I'm going to go over into the middle, because, uh, well, first I start heading this way, but then I look at the composition of the team a little bit, I'm like, okay, we have lots of heavies. Um, so there's no real use for me to go into the city, I will just be brawling with heavies, and the Patton does not exactly have that much armor. Um, so instead, we're going to play the middle a little bit and see if we can get some spots, try to get flanking shots into people. Um, and also there shouldn't really be much competition in the middle. The only real candidates are the Waffentrager and 1375. Um, obviously the Waffentrager is a big deal, but the 1375 can be easily handled. Um, so we're just, uh, kind of using these quasi bushes here to protect our, uh, to get a little camo as we try to spot over here, see if we can get anything. Uh, anyone who's a little stupid and goes a little too close to the lake. Um, there is a Yag Tiger. I spot. Um, he does go into my field of fire, but I miss that opportunity, um, unfortunately. Uh, so I'm just gonna hold here. This game starts out quite slowly. Uh, I'm just holding here, waiting for things to develop. There's no reason for me to push forward. That will probably just result in me getting Waffen triggered in the front and everything else in the side, since the heavies are still making their way into town. Um, so often they'll stop on the way and shoot at things that may pop out in the middle. Here I'm getting a little more aggressive, but I still don't quite want to jump over to the, uh, around the turn in the middle. Um, put a shot into the side of that Tiger too. Um, one of the nicer things about the Patton is the Alpha damage is actually quite good. Um, it's kind of on par with heavies to some extent, a little less. Um, but compared to other tier 9 mediums, it is quite nice. Um, and you don't have to do as many shots to rack up some very nice damage. Um, the gun's not the most accurate, um, as in raw accuracy, but it's still usable for sniping, I find. Um, as you see, that shot misses. Um, the accuracy of the gun really comes in the great dispersion stats. Um, its actual raw accuracy once you're fully aimed is pretty lackluster. Um, as you see, I tracked that 5100 there instead of putting a nice shot into his side, which would have been preferable. Um, but we're just trying to see if we can pick off any targets that are out in the open. Um, and as I look over here, I see, oh, hello, IS-3 and IS-6. Uh, pop one into the back of the IS-6. At this point, I am probably going to get spotted soon, so I'm trying to back down the ridge a little here. That shot on the IS-3 goes completely wide. I can't tell if the IS... IS-3 looks like I, I'm spotted, but I don't think my sixth sense went off, so... I think he just took a blind shot at that point because he's kind of frustrated that he's being shot at. So I'm waiting for that IS-3 to become curious again, since I did miss a bunch of shots, so he might think that whatever's shooting at him is not much of a threat. But he doesn't seem terribly interested, so I'm actually going to try to sweep around here um, to see if I can get easier shots. There we go. Square into the back of the IS-3. Perfectly average damage roll. Um, I now have a nice bush, so IS-3 is still not spotting me. So I can kind of just unload into him. That time, I was close enough. Um, Tiger 2 conveniently stops in front of my gun. Uh, and that was a high explosive shell from the IS-3 there. Trying to get the proper shot lined up there, but it goes high and hits his turret. That's no good. Um, one thing this gun does not have going for it is penetration. 
Um, but as if you watch any of my videos in vehicles like the Super Pershing, etc., you know that that's something I personally uh, claim, at least, to be quite good at handling. Um, so that shot gets eaten by the spaced armor. I should have aimed lower. So that would have been my fault. But the IS-3 will still turn his butt to me, so I will gladly take the shot. There is the M40, so if we could remove him from the game, that would certainly help the team. A little bit below average damage roll, but I did need an above average one to kill him anyways. But he does not move, which is really dumb of him, and so he is dead. I spot the Waffentrager, who I figured would be over here. Plant a shot into his middle, and now that we kind of have the HP advantage on him, um, due to the very, very high rate of fire of this gun, which you can't see because the mod doesn't display the reload timer correctly, um, <laughs> I leave this T-34 on 1 HP, <laughs> so then I take the most um, highest bang for your buck shot doing 1 damage with a 390 alpha gun. Uh, but I finish him off. Um, but anyways, as I was saying, the rate of fire on this gun is exceptionally good. So the DPM on this is very high and is competitive with the Waffentrager Panzer IV. So if I go engage him, I can actually come out of that victorious since I have a slight health advantage. Um, so I'm thinking, okay, this IS-3 does not seem to care about looking this way, so I should probably remove this Waffentrager from the battle. I light him on fire, but he has an auto fire extinguisher, which is kind of annoying. Um, but he is now two shots for me, so I can easily go finish him off. Um, taking a hit is fine, though I would rather not do it if I don't have to, so I'm being a little cautious to maybe bait him into taking a dumb shot. He, he hits, so I'll just move in and finish him off. Get a ram in there, because he has slightly more than my alpha damage and he is dead. Um, so now I need to I need to sweep into the city and kind of resolve the problem in there since they are capping. Um, so I'm going to see what I can do about that. The T-30 is engaging the IS-3. Um, T-30 actually takes him out. Um, T-30 no longer has very much health left. And the Yogg Tiger is going to take advantage of that and come behind him to kill him. So now we have our T-34 over there who is being attacked by the Type 4, and I have to deal with the Yogg Tiger over here. Um, so I'm going to wait for this Yogg Tiger to maybe push down from the position he was in. Um, because I would prefer to not take a hit from him if I can get away with it. I don't know if... I, he did not spot me, because my sixth sense did not go off. Uh, I get to, get to plant a nice shot into his rear. Fortunately, unfortunately, he does not do a terrible amount of damage, but he is still about at three-shot health. Now, that Type 4 is really worrying me, because he's taken out our T-34, and the Type 4 has more armor than we have penetration which is a large problem. Um, so we're, we're gonna, we need to take out this Yogg Tiger because um, he's closer. The Type 4 is going to take quite a long time to get over here. Uh, Yogg Tiger is facing this way. My shot misses. Um, so I'm gonna... This is usually not recommended but I'm doing it at such an angle and I'm kinda just hoping the track will eat the shot. I would love to not take damage there if I could. So that's the theory behind the little so that's great for maneuver. See if you take a dumb shot. Um, so I need to push between these two heavies here, but uh, it doesn't seem like the best plan. So I want to see if this Yogg Tiger has moved forward. While he's moving, he's going to be less accurate, and see if I can just pop out, surprise him, and plant a shot. Um, He does not appear to be immediately there, but nope, he's reset back into that position, so I will put a shot into him, and then because I do have a faster reload, I'm going to pursue him, but he's gotten away for long enough that I am now, we are both one shots to each other, 
So I'm going to come around to this corner. Trying to fake him out a little bit. Sadly, I cannot maneuver around this building quite as fast as he can traverse. Um, so I'm trying to see if I can bait a shot into my nice 100 millimeter thick upper frontal plate. Because that will bounce. Instead, he hits my tracks, which is more than good enough. Throw one into his lower plate. Five kills. And now we have the problem. The Type 4 Heavy. Um, which I believe has 250 flat at the front. Um, our gun has 218 penetration. So, this is a problem. So, I don't... I almost never load uh, premium ammunition, but this is a case where I really want to win this game, and there is actually almost no chance I will win if I do not load APCR. So this is the type of situation I'm actually in support of APCR. Um, so I'm trying to see where he's going to come in from. Because I just need to play lots of pop-out games with him, preferably. Uh, so I'm just trying to get a little jump on him. Uh, I don't know quite where he is, because he has not been spotted in a long time. Um, so we're going to come around this way. And he's in the cap. So I'm going to assume he doesn't think I'm coming from this direction. He does not. Shot goes into his upper plate pens because APCR has just about enough um, penetration. So he is now a two shot to me and I am now a one shot to him. Problem is I still can't really consistently penetrate his armor. That shot goes into the track. Which is not so good. So now, he has this power position since he's in the cap. Obviously he has the more armor. So I'm going to pop into here to make him think I'm coming around this way by stagnating the cap. So hopefully that, that would throw him off a little bit. It does not draw him around this corner like I was hoping. So instead, we are going to wrap around, see if we can kind of surprise him as to where we're coming from. The, uh, the bad thing about the strategy, though, is because I'm taking so long, he can to an extent guess where I'm coming from. Um, an equally valid strategy is almost to sit in the same place for a long time and then pop out there since they figure that they're, you're gone for that time, but I just chose to approach from a completely different angle, and he's looking at me. So I take a panic shot as I back up. It does not actually appear to hit him at all, which is unfortunate. I'm trying to maybe make him miss a shot. Um, that would be fantastic if that could happen. Um, so I'm just sitting here, because I... If I do this right, I'm actually a very small target to him. And if he can f miss one shot, I can get two um, against him. He takes a shot and hits my mantlet and fails to penetrate. So I have some time where I can sit and let the shell bounce off his cupola. Um, so, yeah... One APCR shell left. Two shots to kill him. I back up a little bit. So that he maybe thinks I'm trying to come back around that corner. Um, but I'm going to wrap around down here. So, the, the um, very I'm in a very weak position here since I only have one APCR shell. But I need to hit him twice. So the second shot must be a side shot. So I'm going to pull around here, see if that spots him. It does not, so I'm kind of confused as to where his position is right now. So we'll see if popping through this road will do anything. Put 
put a shot into the bag of his turret, and now I am out of APCR. And, very unfortunately, I also got a low damage roll. So, he is two shots, still. Which is very frustrating, but I really don't have much of a chance of beating him here. I just need to hope that I can get up in his face and flank him. So I'm just kind of just gutting into the cap here. And I thought he maybe had exited that way. He did, but he turned around. And he unloads into me. Um, so yeah, that was a very sad game. Uh, during that entire time, I was super tense. Um, but in the end, it is a loss. Um, I guess I guess that's the theme of my channel recently with the uh, KV5 game I uploaded. Um, but yeah, um, that is the best game I've ever had in the M46 patent, and the uh, after action report will certainly show you why. So back in a sec. So welcome to the after action report, where we see that we got a handsome 1,696 experience and 58,000 credits. Um, that is without a times two for the day. Um, so that gives you a pretty good idea of where this game is. Um, high caliber defender makes sense. And a nice ace tanker master badge, which I had gotten many times before, but it's always nice to see that you got another game um, that would have qualified. Um, and if you just uh, look at the vehicle breakdown there, um, you'll notice that there are a lot of numbers. Um, I hit many things. And so, uh, when we go into the team score, <laughs> we see that I did 7,306 damage. My damage record in World of Tanks. That is a lot of damage. Um, I know there are people who have done 10,000, whatever. Um, often... When I see those games, they usually happen in Tier 10 Tank Destroyers. Um, not to say I haven't seen some very impressive games uh, at Tier 9 um, that people have posted on the forums that have also been of this level, but this is not a common thing. <laughs> uh, I was very, very happy with this game. Um, I, I Just 7,000 damage is quite an achievement for me. Um, I am quite good, but I am not ridiculously good, so to pull a game like this out of my ass, where I kind of carried the team to an extent, because, as you see, there were some players who didn't quite contribute as much. Um, all due respect to the Type 4 Heavy on the other team, though, he did a very good job, um, and their Yog Tiger as well. Um, the, uh, Type 4 actually, uh, PM'd me after this game, um, saying that I did a good job in those fun game because it, it was a fun game and the uh, fact that I lost didn't really matter because um, that was a really interesting duel at the end and honestly I think I did pretty well considering the matchup of no health Patton versus type 4 heavy <laughs> um, so yeah uh, 998 base experience because sadly I was on a losing team um, so courage resistance only does so much um, Going to the detailed report, we see that it took 33 shots fired, 28 of which hit, and only 22 of which penned, but that's 22 390 damage shells. So, whereas, like, you'd look at, like, these type of stats in, like, a low-tier vehicle where you're, like, the T-34 and you've got 85 alpha damage, and, like, that's still a good amount, of, that's a good amount of damage, but, like, it doesn't add up ridiculously like this gun does with 390. Um, so that totals up all the way to 7,306, 2,800 of which came at a distance of more than 300 meters when I was sniping towards the beginning of the game. Um, so yeah, we received six hits, two of which actually failed to penetrate, which is nice. Um, Actually, I don't know what one of those hits is, because the six... No, I received one non-penetration from the Type 4, which was the 600 damage. I don't know what the other thing listed is. Oh, it was the track shot from the Yog Tiger. Ah, okay. So, and then six enemy vehicles spotted. Also nice to have, because why not? Um, because I pushed down the middle at the beginning. So, ten vehicles damaged, five destroyed. 
100 base defense points. And sadly, I lost money since obviously I had to shoot all six of my APCR rounds. Had I not, I would have profited pretty handsomely on that game. Um, I mean, in addition to the fact that I am generally opposed to premium rounds to an extent, I just don't also use them because you lose stupid amounts of credits. Um, you can pull off a game like this and having fired six APCR will still mean you lose money, um, which is quite unfortunate. Uh, but yeah, I, um, this is definitely, uh, the best battle I have had in World of Tanks. Um, it's a very nerve-wracking battle, and I think I did quite well to pull off a 7k plus game, um, in the patent. Uh, sadly could not win. Um, but that will be all for this episode, and I will see you guys next time. Goodbye.